Will Apple's new AI finally fix Siri? Hey, Siri. Welcome back to Deaton Street, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about new AI features that Apple is currently developing that might actually make Siri usable and fix the hot mess that it's been since its inception in like, what, 2014, I think it came out? Mm -hmm. So before we get into that, we'd appreciate it if you'd consider liking and subscribing. It helps us out a lot in the algorithm, and it's completely free. We don't charge you for it at all. Um, anyways, now that we have that <laughs> disgusting, disgusting <laughs> thing out of, I hate asking, I hate asking that. I'm sorry that we have to ask you. Uh, so we have this paper here. It looks like it's on nine to five Mac and this will be down in the description. Mm -hmm. It, it seems like that Apple is finally going to enter this AI space. They're saying it's better than chat GT, G, oh Jesus. This is an ongoing There's thing. There's that word, it's man. It's an ongoing thing. Chat GPT. Seems like it's going to be better than that, and it will be integrated <laughs> in with Siri. Yeah. So uh, you sent this article over to me earlier this week. I assume you know a lot about it. What you got? So, um, and this is just kind of picking from this article a little bit. Uh, let's see. So Siri's been recently attempting to describe images received in messages when using CarPlay and announced notification feature uh, in typical Siri fashion. It sucks. It's not doing a great job. Uh, Apple has a new AI uh, that they're developing still that's called Realm. R-E-A-L-M. R-E-A-L-M. Kind of, L-M. L-M is capitalized, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's re capital ALM. It's reference resolution as language modeling. Whatever they want to justify that name terminology to be, whatever. Apple likes to do fancy things whenever it should just be Apple AI. Realm Come actually on, seems like a pretty pretty weak Apple name, so I bet it gets re renamed. Oh, for sure. You know. It, it'll probably um, be like Siri AI, you know. Yeah. Siri AI. Syria, uh, Syria, Syria. Yeah. The new Christopher <laughs> uh, Paulini book, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's the apparently the realm stuff has like on screen entities that is like in front of you. Uh, it interacts with those entities. It interacts it's with con conversational entities. So it's like relevant to the conversation that you're having with realm. Or I think they're trying to integrate it into Siri. So it's going to be its own you know thing. Um, and it's got background, it, it interacts with the background entity. So like an alarm that's set or music that's in the background. So like you can tell it, set an alarm, blah, 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 blah. All that stuff. Like basic Siri functions, but apparently it's supposed to make it better. Yeah. Which, whatever. Um, they're confident that at least uh, it compares to GPT 3.5 and 4. Okay. But and like at least compares to, they're pretty confident that it's like outperforming both of them. Okay. And 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 I say 3.5 and 4, 3.5 being like text-based mm -hmm. um prompts and stuff like that. Four being um like Dolly the, and then uh, Dolly like image uh you know uh detection and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Uh Browsing it, as well, I think, is, is exactly. a fourth thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, main point is it's supposed to make Siri better. Yeah. And it, it's interesting because when you, when we think about chat GPT <laughs> and Siri, they're very different, right? Siri very is different. a personal assistant. It's supposed to help you do things like, I guess it's supposed to help you like set an alarm or figure out the weather. Um, it, it's very like it has been and is currently very gimmicky. I know people that use it for certain mm -hmm. things, but uh, to me, it's never really saved me any time. Uh, in no. fact, the only AI or um, personal assistant, electronic assistant, you want to say, that I use is the, the Amazon ones that I won't say, and that's just to control my lights. And I, I, I use the other one with the two O's. Right. Um, you know. it, it, that's the, the best application 
I've found as you know a pretty techie guy to use these virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. I will say it is nice when I'm on a run or on a walk and I get a text message and Siri will let me know what the text message says. I like that, uh, but I'm not one of the people that does like text to speech or anything like that. So, and then you think about Chat GPT and it's like more project based, right? Mm -hmm. You go to it to help you, you know, cheat on your high school exam, <laughs> yeah. uh, to write papers for you and to come up with thumbnail and titles for YouTube videos that mm -hmm. are terrible and you don't actually use. <laughs> Point being is there are two different things. And yeah. If you do, if you melt those two things together, I think there is promise if it isn't terrible. Um, I would love it if I could quickly ask Siri without going to chat GPT online or browsing or doing anything like that to generate yeah. ideas for thumbnails, thumbnail yeah. layouts for this video and doing text to speech that way. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe there's promise, but with how much we've been doing AI videos and how much we've been looking into AI tech for Deaton Street, I'm learning a little bit uh, that I think AI is like 70% marketing and 30% real tech. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe, maybe this is just another big marketing thing where, you know, Tim Cook will look cool saying oh, all the specs on stage. Well, that and also I feel like he's like, he's missing out like he's he's got fomo real bad so like ai is a huge thing yeah. we got to get into it same with the vr stuff is we got to do our own vr we got to comp we got to compete so like they're gonna do that in order to i mean we'll touch on it like we did last week is the the ecosystem stuff I, like they're gonna want you to be integrated and fully integrated and not have to worry about other uh products to do something that apple can do and and it, it makes sense right like if i can just go to <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, siri and, and ask it to look at my calendar no right not right now please not no okay and look <laughs> at my calendar and change you know kind of like the stuff that rabbit uh rabbit, the rabbit was AI. the rr1 yeah. and i believe the other the pin ai the pin, pin the mm -hmm. things that they were promising where it's like intuitive AI, where it it knows you and it can learn your schedule. Um, I haven't heard much about those two devices. Again, I think maybe they were highly marketed. And I've I've been seeing a bunch of ads on the pin, not oh, rabbit. Okay. So it's a little promising, but you know, hopefully they do good. Whatever. In that video, we said, you know, if only they would just do this for your phones. Well, mm -hmm. it, predictably they're they're gonna try to do this with your phones. The question is, with all of this stuff, with all of this AI stuff, is the practical usage of mm -hmm. the, the stuff. And, and how much is just this marketing ploy of you know looking cool on a stage and asking Siri to do something that she hasn't been able to do yet? Yeah. yeah. But like you said, the ecosystem, right? So yep. it, we know, because we did a video last week, that the Department of Justice is coming after them. Because of the ecosystem stuff, because their products are meant to work better with Apple type stuff. Mm -hmm. Does this mean with that Department of Justice lawsuit that they're going to have to allow integrations with other AIs into their apps? In, other AIs can look in your calendar. Other I, AIs can look in your text messages. Hmm. That's, that can be that can be kind of fishy. I mean, especially if when you take into consideration like all the other AIs that are doing shady stuff currently, you know, not releasing certain um, projects that they're working on that seem kind of fishy, you Open know, AI, whatever the yeah. one for OpenAI was doing. Can't, it's uh, Q, Q star? Something Q like that. something. I yeah. don't know. Uh, so, I mean, but I, I don't know. I feel like that's with like any tech. Like, it... it, it I it just can mean be it hacked. is like it can be certainly there's always going to be like privacy and security yeah, yeah. risks. I just mean that as Apple is developing an AI, are they going to again give it preferential treatment oh. on their iPhones, oh. and are they just going to continue this cycle of you know Absolutely. the DOJ saying that they're a monopoly because they're doing this stuff? Yeah, I think that's the I think that's been the case for Apple since Apple has been Apple. Yeah. Uh. I think that's just been their shtick the entire time. Uh, so 
I don't see them. There has there will have to be a pretty big legal thing, probably an outcome of what's going on right now, yeah. to really change that course, uh, to make them do something differently. But if it, if that doesn't pan out, like you know, the DOJ do, wants to happen, I don't see Apple changing a dang thing. Yeah. I, I completely agree, and I think Apple has the money and the lawyers to fight that pretty well to where mm-hmm. even if they do lose the lawsuit, I think that it'll be very a narrow loss in scope and that they won't have to change a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, kind of last thing on this topic. Mm-hmm. The newest and like the big marketing thing that Apple has released that made all the headlines was the Apple Vision Pro. Yep. We've, we're quite a ways out, and I, I think that we can say that – Certainly by Apple standards, it was a flop. You know, maybe even by just normal every company standards, it was a flop. Mm -hmm. If Apple develops this AI assistant or develops Siri and promises a bunch and flops again, folks are going to start asking questions about, you know, this. What's going on? What's going on, but also the... The Apple kind of vibe or their mm-hmm. track record has been that their stuff works on day one pretty well. Yeah. And this would be two flops. And I'm kind of worried it's gonna flop because of how bad Siri was. Yep. I don't I don't I don't understand how it took so long for them to be like, yeah, we can upgrade Siri <laughs> and make it better with AI. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. There are other assistants that are far better. Yeah. Far better than Siri. Yeah. And you think that AI is going to do something? AI might. I mean, if it's performing better than chat GPT-4. There you go. And uh, (laughs) that was medium speed. Um, (laughs) And you can talk to it and it's not an extra subscription. I mean, that would be a win. Yeah. I just doubt them. That would be awesome. I doubt them because of the Apple Vision Pro now. Even as an Apple truther, I have just a little shade of like, you let me down once. Fool me once, Apple. I I doubt it because of Siri, plain and simple. Yeah. You know, like, come on. Uh, So, yeah, but that, I mean, that's like the main, that's the main conversation that, you know, we're trying to have was, is the AI going to boost Siri? Is it worth it? Is it, you know. I think maybe, but we'll see. I, I'm I, paint me as a skeptic on this one. Usually, I get very <laughs> excited about Apple, but paint me yeah. as a little bit skeptical. Um, yeah. they, they've broken my heart this year. Um, thankfully, thankfully, I didn't have three thousand dollars to spend on the, the Vision Pro. Yes, thank goodness I'm poor. Thankfully. <laughs> um, so, what do you think? Is do you use Siri? On an you know, everyday basis, do you think that this is going to improve Siri to where it is usable and, and, and very, you know, integrated with our day to day lives, or is this just another marketing ploy by our fine folks at AI? I don't know. Let us know. Peace. See ya. I'm walking the streets of nowhere. I'm playing the game.